Hi students, welcome to another Mr. Ness screencast. Today's aim is understanding thematic maps, and here are your objectives. Before you continue, make sure that you have your vocab sheet ready and that you are prepared to copy some vocab terms and take some notes. All right, here we go. The first word today is scale. You've probably seen a scale on a map before. It tells you how to calculate distances. But in this class, we will mostly be talking about the idea of scale, which is something else. In that sense, scale means the scope or the extent of the space that is being studied. Imagine that you start studying the spatial trends in your neighborhood. Now imagine zooming out and studying the same trends, but in the entire United States. You just greatly increased the scale of what you're studying. You increased your scope, how much you're looking at. The next term is a thematic map. And before I show you the definition, let's look at a non-thematic map first. I bet when you think about a map, you think of something like this one or this one. These are called physical political maps, and they show natural features, country borders, and maybe capital cities. We will be looking at some of these in class, but mostly we'll be looking at a different type of map, thematic maps. A thematic map is a map that shows a specific idea or variable associated with space. Take a second and write this down, and then I will show you what I mean. All right, before I show you the thematic map, let's take one more look at the other kind of map, the physical political maps, the kind you're used to. This one shows the borders of 193 countries recognized by the United Nations. This is not a thematic map. Now look at this map. It shows the borders of all the countries too, but it adds something else, the number of billionaires that live in each country. So it's adding another idea or variable and showing how that variable changes throughout space. So this is a thematic map. Now we're gonna look at a few different types of thematic maps and each type presents information or the variable in its own way. The first type is called a chloropleth map. Chloro means color. And chloropleth maps use different colors or shading to show differences in predefined areas of space. The predefined area is the unit of space that is being studied. And often the title of the map tells you what the predefined area is. So in this map, number of billionaires by country, the predefined area is country. You can also tell what the predefined area is because it's the smallest unit on the map with only one color. In this map, different countries are shaded different colors, with each color telling us how many billionaires live in that country. Notice that you can only determine information about the predefined area. This map tells us how many billionaires live in the U.S., for example. It's black, so there are at least 500 of them. But the map doesn't tell us which states or cities or towns those billionaires live in, because our smallest unit with a single color is a country. We don't know anything about smaller units like cities. Let's go back to this idea of scale for a second. Here's another chloropleth map, billionaires per state. Here, we're looking at the same variable as the last map, the number of billionaires. But we've decreased the scale and changed the predefined area from country to state. In other words, instead of conveying information about the whole world, the scope, the scale of this map is just one country, the United States. And now we can see that although there are over 500 billionaires in the US, they don't all live in the same part of the US. They're concentrated in certain areas like California and New York. Notice again that each state is shaded in with a certain color to show how many billionaires live there. Remember, chloropleth maps are all about 
shaded predefined areas. Here are some other examples of predefined areas you might see in chloropleth maps, and they are arranged in descending scale. At the global level, at a very large scale, we have regions like Latin America or Africa. Decreasing our scale, the next predefined area is a country like the United States. Going further, we have a state like New York or New Jersey. Below the state level, we have counties and below counties, you might see something called precincts. Precincts, these are administrative districts within cities that are a little bit larger than a neighborhood. And the smallest predefined area you will probably see is called a census tract, which is about the same size as a neighborhood. Let's look at one more chloropleth map just for fun. Begin by reading the title. Then identify the predefined unit of study. Finally, look at what each color means and think about what the map tells you about the predefined units. In this case, the predefined unit is, take a guess. If you said country, you were correct. All right, we're moving on to the second type of thematic map, which is called an isopleth map. Iso means line. And isopleth maps have lines or colors that connect areas of equal value across space. A common type of isopleth map is a topographic map, and I'll show you that in a second. For now, look at this map of average temperatures in the US. Now, this map has colors. How do you know it's not a chloropleth map? The difference between chloropleth and isopleth maps is that chloropleth maps <clears throat> have predefined areas that are shaded in, whereas isopleth maps have colors that cross all the boundaries. And that's what I mean when I say that isopleth maps show areas across space. In this map, every place in America that has the same average temperature gets the same color, regardless of what state or county it's in. And you can see that the colors flow, flow, excuse me, across the state lines. Here's a special kind of isopleth map called a topographic map. Topographic maps show elevation of land. Similar to the previous map, this map draws a line through every point in space with the same elevation. I'm not gonna spend time going over how to read these maps, but this particular map here is describing a landform that looks like this little island. See if you can figure out how that works. The next type of thematic map is a dot map. Dot maps show a dot for every occurrence of some value. Dot maps are especially useful for showing the density of something, how many of that thing exist in a certain area of space. In this map, US lightning deaths 2007 to 2017, each dot represents one person who was killed by lightning. By using dots, we can easily see that there are a lot of lightning deaths in Florida. Look how closely packed or dense the dots are in that state. Seems like a scary place to live. The next type of thematic map is called a proportional symbol map. Proportional symbol maps use a certain symbol, sometimes a dot, of different sizes in order to show different values. In this map, larger dots represent more Walmarts. So Texas has a lot of Walmarts, while Alaska has very few. The difference between a proportional symbol map and a dot map is that in a dot map, every dot is the same, whereas in a proportional symbol map, if it uses dots, some dots will be bigger than others. And the last type of map is really cool. It's called a cartogram. Cartograms substitute some variable for land area, which distorts the size of land and shows different values. In this cartogram of world population, countries are drawn not according to how they really look, but according to how many people live in them. So China, which is in green, and India, which is in teal, are really big because they have a lot of people. 
so they're drawn larger. In fact, China is the most populous country in the entire world, and India is second. And the third is, can you guess based on the size of the countries in the cartogram? The third largest country is the United States. Again, that is large by population. Now let's zoom in and look at Russia. It's this tiny yellow sliver up here above China. On a typical map, Russia looks huge because it is huge, at least by land area. But Russia has a very small population. So on this map, the cartogram, it looks really tiny. Can you figure out what the most populous country in Africa is? What about South America? All right, that's all for today's lesson. I want you to review the objectives, take notes if you need to so that you have a reference for the do now, and if you don't know the answer to any of them or aren't sure, just rewind the video and look again. And I will see you in class. Bye, students.